Welcome, welcome everyone to another edition of Mac Flash Music, the show where we debate and discuss our favorites and different musical topics. I am VJ Jim Vandervoort. To my right is my, beside me I should say, is my A-side, Scott Despins. So, and right how, you how you doing, buddy? Good, how are you guys? These are VJs, I need a fun name. <laughs> it's funny we and, didn't talk about it beforehand and i'd already put mine in and then i i came into the room and i was like jim had already put his in there i'm like sweet that's hilarious and it's, and it's perfect for me because it's an anagram for me yeah, and of course right below is uh vjab that's andrew Bryan. good to see you guys as always this is going to be a fun topic i've been waiting to do this since we actually started this show back in April, actually, and yes, it's really got me pumped. So let me give you guys a little bit of background for this. August 1st, 1981, if you tuned into this channel, you saw Mission Control ready to launch a rocket. And when it did, it sent a moon man up to the moon, and Mission Control said to the world around, ladies and gentlemen, rock and roll as a neon MTV flag was planted in the moon and we are celebrating mtv's 40th anniversary today with our top five favorite music videos now mtv has certainly changed over the past 40 years it's not the music channel that it once was <laughs> it's not music channel at all <laughs> at all yeah well to fulfill their obligations in the states they still have to air some in the dead air and the dead air time however yeah. MTV was originally built on bringing you 24-7 the best music, and we want to celebrate that tonight. And I'm really stoked to do this. What about you guys? Yeah, this is daunting. This is a daunting task, trying to pick uh, movie or pick uh, uh, music videos for this. I mean, there's so many to choose. So There's a lot, and it's a different time of when, when you were around. Because, I mean... I don't know how much you know MTV or mu much music I watched as a kid. I remember I grew up in high school in like the Napster and Kazam era, so we were like downloading a lot of cool videos at the time. And I'll pay yeah. homage to to some of those videos that were really important that like me and my buddies really enjoyed to to watch. Uh, so definitely, it was a product of the '80s, and you know by the time I first got into music was like the mid to late '90s. And there are some that I woke up and I remember watching on TV and there are some that I watched on the internet and I kind of grew up more so in the era of the internet and didn't have an appreciation for like what MTV had paved. So it is, it is really cool. And it's going to be fun list to share as well as see what, uh, what everybody else has. So, yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm in the opposite spectrum of that. Like you said, is mainly there in the eighties and uh, while other kids were, waking up Saturday morning to watch their cartoons. I was waking up Saturday morning to watch uh, music videos on, uh, what was it called? Um, was this, I forget what it was called. It was, uh, but it was, it was um, uh, Casey Kasem doing American music. top 10, American top 10. There you go. And, and yeah. so every Saturday morning I'd be wake up and watch Casey Kasem count down to the top 10 videos for that week. And I would be hoping that my favorite videos would be shown. And, uh, so yeah, music videos definitely played a huge role in me growing up. And, uh, when I was at my grandparents' house, I didn't have much music at home here. Uh, but when I was at my grandparents' house, they had much, they had cables, they had much music. So much music would be on, literally the entire time I was there. And so just constantly watching music videos. So it's, this is a really big deal. And that's why it's definitely insanely hard to pick. Five. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And as a kid for me growing up, I didn't have the luxury of cable till I was about 13 or 14. So about 2003, 2004. So mine was trying to get the antenna in a perfect condition to get the box. <laughs> the which box, was a, baby. Yes. Yeah. Which was a paid subscription channel. It ended up changing channel five on antenna to MTV two later on. Yeah. So you kind of got that nice little mix of the sub channel there, but that's what I grew up on. The so box, yeah, we're the box Absolutely. will come up. The box will come up on one of mine because that's uh, <laughs> where I first saw one of my music videos. So awesome. So we are going to talk about our top five. We're going to get to it in a second. And I do want to mention a couple things. Obviously, there are going to be some music videos that we've talked about in the past on previous shows. And of course, please look them up in our channel, the Mac Flash Trivia channel, 
on YouTube, one of them, Thriller is not going to be on anybody's list. And let's let's be honest, it is the alpha and omega of music videos. Absolutely. So important. And there's not enough good things to be said about it between – it paved the way for big budget music videos. Yeah. But – because we've talked about it before, we kind of want to go in fresh and talk about a few different things that we haven't before. So that's not going to be on this list. And you might not see a couple of your different favorites on the list. But if you want to comment and add a top five, please feel free to chime in on the comment section on our Instagram page or on Facebook as well. We're going to have the video linked up as soon as this show is dropped. So please do that. And guys, do you want to get started? Let's do this. Yeah. All right. This is, your, this is your topic, pal. Let's get start us off. I'm batting lead off. All right. I love it. I love it. So my number um, five, I wanted to talk about a particular favorite group, girl group of mine, that uh, really hit it big in 1996. They released a video that was very cheaply done and done in one shot, but this was their second video, I think probably trumps it just because of, it was more there was more quality added to it more money behind it and the girls look dynamite in it and let me cue it up yeah i knew i knew it knew that's i knew this is where you're going yes so it is spice girls say you'll be there and as you're gonna see Leading up into the start of this, you're going to see the girls with different names. They gave themselves different characters, and that was based off of the movie Pulp Fiction, which, if you remember, Mia Wallace talked about her famous pilot, Fox Force 5, where all yeah. the girls had different characters and different traits. And so they incorporated some of that in there. And also what I found out was that one of Russ Meyer's films, who was an exploitation filmmaker in yeah. the 60s, it's also based off of a movie called Faster Pussycat Kill yeah, Kill. Yeah. With the desert scene and a whole bunch of the different karate moves that are synchronized into the video in the uh, choreography, I should say. But just looking at it, a lot higher quality than the Spice Girls wannabe video, just because that was done on a one camera shot and we didn't know if the girls were going to be successful obviously they did and that's why there's so much more behind this video and like i said look at the girls they just look not only is it girl power they look great but they're also ass kickers too which is the total accompaniment of what their girl power statement what they actually wanted it to be so to me it's a damn near perfect clip for me. And I will bring it down and exit that out. But yeah, it's absolutely perfect for me. That's my number five. You guys want to discuss it? Uh, it was on he heavy, heavy rotation when it came out. Uh, it was constantly on. Um, and, you know, uh, I was as a young man, I was, I was very much not complaining. Usually I'd, you know, turn the volume down. But I would still watch it, um, uh, you know. And, and yeah, it's it's fun to throw those kind of uh, you know nods to uh, sleazy cinema, which was you know kind of neat to watch. But uh, yeah, it's it's fun. It's definitely a fun video. It was not the sleazy cinema, but then again, they made it into a way where they owned it, right? Sure, and of course, again. Well, and, yeah. and as sleazy as that cinema was, those girls in the in in Fester puts get kill kill are pretty kick ass, and, and you know they're driving in hot rod cars and beating the shit out of dudes, and yeah, there it's I mean it as you know exploitative as it was, they it was never a matter of you know those girls in the film were lesser than they were in fact kicking a lot of ass just like they they were in this video, so it's uh it's pretty cool. Cool. Awesome. Uh, that's a great choice. I don't know. I, I knew I knew the the Spice Girls. They all kind of blend in. I remember Wannabe, and I remember that and stuff. I, I got in my head. I probably couldn't have told you that that video, if you showed me a screenshot, was for that song. But now that you said it's coming back, so that's the fun part of this episode is is that's I remember watching that, and that's great. So it's an iconic video. So I'm going to start with my number five. Thanks MTV. So I uh, for my number five, 
like I said, I remember downloading a lot, Napster, Kazam, LimeWire, and videos and just watching them. And there's a lot that I'll talk about today that I, I truly remember. So I went to high school. I started grade nine in 2001, grade eight in 2000. And uh, this next artist was around that time. And, you know, I like rap music. Uh, a lot of the videos I tried to pour through, a lot are bland and a lot, you know, kind of suck and don't really tell a story or have you know, um, imagination to their videos. Uh, whereas this one was kind of fun because it took a really fun song and it added parts of the history of the lead singer of the, the group, the rap group that, uh, that they're discussing. He's more known as the single star, uh, but given his first love, uh, was for a sport and he turned the sport down to become a rapper. Uh, so with that, my number one or number five is going to be Nelly and the St. Lunatics. Batter up. Because I always thought this video was really fun. It's the same lunatics, and it's Nelly, who was uh, scouted by the Pittsburgh Pirates. He was scouted by the Atlanta Braves. His real name, Cornell Hayes Jr., uh, loves baseball. Big, big, big time baseball fan. You see him, you see him in the uh, in the charity games, the celebrity games. He's always going yard, he's always diving out. So I remember a video like this. My friends and I just thought it was super cool. It's the fact that you know, you get Sherman Helmsley in a cameo here because they sampled the Jefferson theme song. You get facts of a, you know, a really kind of ghetto hood baseball team, and they're just super cool. And they're rapping, and they're they're laughing, and they're eating food, and they got hot girls in there as well too. And the fans are loving it. So I remember just like really liking baseball in the 2000s, really liking sports, knowing that Nelly was there. He is right there. Noah and Nelly was a baseball player, and they wrote a song about them being a baseball team, kind of like turning baseball on its head. And there's a million rap videos like this, but because Nelly's love is for baseball, uh, I kind of give him the, the benefit of the doubt on that. So it goes through, it goes through Ali, it goes through Murphy Lee, and it goes through Nelly's verse as well too. So it's a lot of the same, but you know, just for the fact that this was one that I remember going to a friend's house and downloading this video and we would put it on and like watch it and like hit balls in his backyard and stuff like that. Super cool memory. So for that, my number five, uh, I wanted to shout out Nelly and the St. Lunatics with uh, Batter Up off Country Grammar from 2000. I've actually never seen that video. I've seen, you know, the other two uh, singles off that album, the videos for that. But I Yeah, Ride right With Me video. and yeah. Uh, yeah. Country Grammar. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't EI also a big hit off of that? Oh, yeah, album? absolutely, yeah. yeah. I don't uh, remember that music video either, much like I don't, but Nelly definitely released a lot of big music videos early sure. on. I mean, his love for Air Force Ones was covered. Yeah, that was a yeah, yeah. Too, I, should, I know. That was a, good, a little commercial yeah. for me. I mean, I bought it. I bought into yeah. it, too. But like I said, that you know, there's a trillion rap videos we'll talk about, too. Looking cool, hot girls. We know all that. They've really lost their luster now, and they don't really tell a story aside from like a handful of like some really social commentary videos. But otherwise, it's hot girls and lots of money. We know that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But otherwise, like I said, the fact that it was baseball, the fact that I was 13 at the time and thought it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen, and Sherman Helmsley doing this throughout the video. Because <laughs> we'll talk about cameos later. I got some cool yeah. cameos coming through some of my videos. They're a staple of music videos as well, too. Celebrity cameos. Yeah. And, uh, and of that, you know... Number five, Harmless Spot, Nelly and the St. Lunatics. Is he what you would imagine Ken Griffey as a rapper being? Because I know <laughs> he you're was. Big, he said I know. Was, uh, the way I swing. Yeah. I, I, know, I know you're a huge Griffey fan. Yeah, so, I love yeah, that. It 100% fits the narrative now. Um, a, right. a, B, finish okay. off our fives. <laughs> so uh, this is going to be a departure for um, – where you guys are going um okay so i i was like i said this is in a near impossible list for me to do and there's so many i wanted to put on here but i just couldn't so i decided to, like i do to take it in a different direction and i was inspired by a video a dvd series that i have uh that um spotlights famous mu uh, music video directors each one each of the dvds uh spotlights a director so i thought i would go with uh five of the directors and pick a video of theirs that I love uh, and, you know, just talk about some of the other stuff that they've done. Uh, and so my number five on that list, and this is the, the, the uh, series that's called uh, the works of the work of director. 
And the number one is, or uh, my number five is Chris Cunningham. And so this video, uh, like we talked about, um, uh, the, we watched, I uh, watched on the box. And so I was at my buddy John's house and we were watching the box for hours and uh, we were watching, somebody is trying to connect to my TV. <laughs> that is weird. Uh, and so there is, uh, um, we were up super late watching music videos for hours and it was about 3 a.m. And we're watching the box and this music video came on and both of us turned to each other. We thought that the devil had, or a demon had taken possession of our TV uh, a la the a la poltergeist or something. And that music video is by a artist called Aphex Twin. And the video is Come to Daddy. I'll play a little bit of it. Can you hear it? A little higher for the volume. Yeah, okay. yeah, I can hear it. It goes loud, very loud, very quickly. And so we're watching this thing and we're like, what is going on? What is this? And, uh, you know, we, you know, it's super late. We're kind of like, you know, been up for hours and n not really knowing what's going on. And uh, we're, I'm like, this is, you know, I, I'd say this is my like token horror movie pick of the, of the, of the episode. You know, I love to throw those, the, the token horror movie and uh, for this. So this is my uh, token horror uh, music video. So you got the dog peeing on the TV and it gets zapped by the TV. <laughs> is it playing? It is. You might, I can't hear anything, but. There it goes. Oh, there it is. Is that loud? It's good. Okay. So, man, yeah. And we're looking at each other like, what in the heck is going on? Like, what is this thing that we're watching? You know, and like literally thought our the TV had become possessed. Uh, and you, <laughs> that that's the artist. They, they pee, uh, superimposed the artist's face on all these little kids uh, throughout the music video. His name's Richard D. James. And so that like that's his face on everyone's uh, in superimposed on these people's bodies. And it's like, uh, it's it's just a crazy, crazy video. And I had never seen anything like it uh, at the time. And so Chris Cunningham, uh, he's kind of known for his crazy visual effects and his crazy visual style. Uh, he's done a bunch of different stuff. But uh, one of the things he's also done, he's done like car commercials and uh, commercials for Levi's and like all these other things. Uh, but he also has insane videos like this. And he has, uh, and, you know, really cool videos for Bjork. Uh, for Portis had Madonna. He does the Frozen video for Madonna, uh, but this video was like at the time. I, like I said, I'd never seen anything like it, and it just blew me away. I was like, I don't even know what this is. I, is is this a music video? I I don't even know. And like, uh, so it it instantly it made me search out Aphex Twin. Uh, made me search out like what what is like what this what this is all about. And uh, I was hooked. So I, I love Apex Twin now because of that video. But, um, you know, it obviously it's only going to be playing at 3 a.m. on, uh, you know, Friday <laughs> night or whatever it is. So, yeah, that's my that's my number five is uh, Apex Twin, Twin Come to Daddy. <laughs> I couldn't imagine turning that on at 3 o'clock at night. <laughs> <laughs> He's scared out of your mind. Yeah, yeah. Trying to, trying I to would watch it. one second of that and go, nope, <laughs> nope. <laughs> trying to recover yeah. from a nightmare. Can I watch the shaky tail feather video again? <laughs> That's not <laughs> my damn bird. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Great pick, great All right, pick. Jim, so, well, one second. What year is that video from? Like is that the '90s or 2000s? Uh, it would have been late '90s. I can find well, out. Yeah, that's just what I wonder. I feel like I wondered if that was like a grunge era thing, like right on the the downside. Awesome. Well, no, it's he's he's a they're, he's an electronic artist, so like a like a lot of like a really glitchy electronic music, and he does a lot of ambient stuff like that. Uh, that is from uh, 1997. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I would have I would have seen that later than that though. I'm I'm sure like 99 maybe I would have saw that, but yeah, number five. 
All right. So Show we're going to get four. to our num number four. All right. And we're going to move on to another famous director for this video. Actually, let me talk about the band first, because I will spoil the band. Uh, I was debating through a bunch of number fours between a couple of different rock bands. One was Van Halen, uh, one was White Stripes, and one was Aerosmith. Aerosmith won out for me. And they really knocked it out of the park during the 90s with their videos. Obviously, they brought Alicia Silverstone into the forefront with the trilogy of videos. Uh, Crying was first, then uh, the Amazing, which also added Jason London, who was famous from Days and Confused. And then in 1994, it was Crazy afterwards, which introduced Liv Tyler, who was originally known as Liv Rundgren before uh, she found out who her actual birth father was. Because <laughs> she spent many years thinking that Todd Rundgren was her father. That's but, wild, I didn't uh, know that. Yeah, later found out, but she still thinks of both of them as her parents equally. They're both great father figures to her now right. that both of them are in their lives, which is a great story. But yeah, Aerosmith really dominated 90s, really adapted to the times because they were a bit of an older band. They were in their 40s in the 90s, but they really uh, embraced the music video and dominated MTV airwaves in a time where you think they're a little bit past their date, but they still kept on rocking strong. But I didn't go with any of those because I actually went with one from the late 80s and it had a famous director a later on famous director attached to it by the name of david fincher who you might know from seven let's go and you might know from fight club and you might know from another movie called the girl with the dragon tattoo this is janie's got a gun now it starts off very ominously with the water phone the police do not cross. Very dark setting. That water phone is actually not in the actual song. It was added specifically for the video. Goes to the screen. They're all in shadows with huge spotlights on it. It shows suspense. It shows ominous. Something's going to happen in this. And the video really sets ties in perfectly with the song because the song is about a very taboo subject it's about child abuse and molestation which is a very it's an extremely dark topic to be talking about but fincher wraps it around perfectly now if you notice right here one of the things i noticed in the video immediately is that you have the symbol of purity right there with the white, but then you know something's going to happen because it immediately flashes right to a black, a black figure sitting, waiting. You don't know what's going to happen. I think it's just perfect direction right there, and it helps sets it perfectly, the topic of it. The mother, obviously, she doesn't want to accept... She doesn't want to accept that her husband's about to do something very terrible to his daughter. And I just think it's perfect. It's perfect direction. And yeah, just not a lot more you can say about it. I mean, I just want to check my notes to make sure I didn't add anything about it. But yeah, basically everything, uh, everything that I mentioned, I wanted to mention. Aerosmith, Janie's Got a Gun is just perfect when it comes to everything from direction, uh, setting the tone of the song to the actual film that you're seeing on screen. And Fincher was a master when it came to music videos. Obviously, he got... He got a lot of recognition for doing the Freedom video, for doing Madonna's Vogue as well. And mm -hmm. he, he did very successful things with Five Minutes. And then when he got the two hours on screen with a bunch of different films, he became even more of a success. But Aerosmith, number four, Janie's Got a Gun. I mean, people are hit or miss on Aerosmith, but to me, it's a great song, fantastic video. Yeah, best of the songs is tell stories. That's pretty cool. And then... Um, yeah, I did just, I know that and I, I knew the aesthetics of it, but it tells you, it's great. It tells a great story. It's dark and it's, it's, uh, it's a serious subject and it's a serious song, but a serious subject. So no yeah. doubt. 
I, in fact, only know the song because of Not Another Teen Movie, which was usually <laughs> <Phoenix> West. <laughs> I don't sing the song without Janie's got a gun. Janie Briggs got a gun. Put the gun Janie's down. Janie's got a gun. <laughs> like, that's why I sing the song now because of Chris Evans. Uh, that's funny. No, it, I mean, you can see you can see uh, his style there, you know, um, showing the, in, the, in the crime scene. And obviously, you'll see that later on when he goes to, to make Seven. Uh, he'll carry that on, but you know, he, he has a distinct uh style to the way he does things, and uh, um, you, you know, you can see the beginnings of it. And he, you know, uh, cut his teeth making these music videos. And there's a lot of you know, it's a lot of the music the directors I'm going to be talking about uh went on to make movies, and and they you know, they got their experience and they got their their uh style, you know, making these videos, which is, is pretty neat to transition from that. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, I bring one more awesome. thing. Okay, so I'm gonna go with my number four. Guys, what do we like? C celebrities are cool. Hollywood is great, right? We like film history. We like stuff like that. So my next video is gonna showcase a lot of like the history of like what's great and probably not great about the history of Hollywood. Uh, this is a song that came out shortly after this artist's third album came out in uh, in 2010 and. It was a great hit. It, like for me, I, I was like, this song is awesome. Why was this not? And then you found out it kind of didn't fit tonally on the album. So he released it as its own single. And it's super forgotten in the history of this artist. We talked about him a few weeks ago on the Canadian artist, but today we're gonna be going for Michael Bublé's Hollywood, which is a super fun video from 2010 with Michael Bublé walking through Hollywood film sets here. He talks about being a teenage idol with an indirect performance of Michael Bublé as Justin Bieber on a uh, an Oprah-style talk show. So basically the premise of this is just Bublé getting lost on a film set and walking around through. And, uh, and then he sees himself dressed as a rock star with girls. And he's like, do you want to be a teenage idol? Do you want to be a rock star? And then as he goes through, he walks through the set. We're gonna get to my favorite part. And truthfully, what I would be if I was a celebrity, I think you'll know. It's this one right here. Oh, is that the out of control megastar? <laughs> I've always loved this part. I just wanna shout out this part. Angry Google, young get paparazzi. And one of the, my favorite lyrics, actually, that I really think about quite often is this line of the song. You don't need a catchy song because the kids will sing along when you sell it with a smile. Love that. So as it goes through, you get Buble as James Dean. You get Buble, uh, Buble as James Dean in the red jacket. You get Buble as a cowboy. You get Buble as an astronaut. It's... It's fun, guys. Like, this movie was my idol at this time. And then you get a big musical montage at the end uh, with all the extras of different films, different eras, different things like this. And then he gets in with friends and drives off. And it's kind of, you know, Entourage almost, which is my favorite show of all time, meets music, meets film history. So uh, it would never come up on another list, a common theme with uh, lists like this one. Get to shout out things that you like that you can't really fit anywhere else. Uh, and it was released as a single, not on any album, and it just kind of came and went because the the album overshadowed a lot of the other stuff um, as this came. So for that, I knew I had to shout out Hollywood because this is a video I'll go back to if I need to pick me up and I'll watch. And I'll be like, this is a really fun video. And it's it shows Buble's love of cinema and history and stuff like that that I have. So uh, I don't doubt any of you have seen this video before, and that's okay. Uh, but I've seen it enough for all three of us. So uh, my number four <laughs> is Michael Buble's Hollywood. Cool. Yeah, that's, pretty, that's fun. I like it. I'm just so glad that you didn't show it just haven't met you yet because I'm on vacation from work and I don't have <laughs> video that's, that's, like, that's honestly we can have this talk off camera like that's the petering off of of Buble where I'm like okay the song's catchy but it's really commercial and then he comes back with like it's a beautiful day and I'm all out on it's a beautiful day it's a beautiful day is the most manufactured pop I'm like I want no part of that Jamie Presley's in the video I'm like this sucks and then that was the 
uh, the one album, the Orange album, To Be Loved, and I was like out on this guy. Uh, but we uh, will always have crazy love in Hollywood. <laughs> That's good. You know, right. it is it is catchy, and then you know, obviously, it fits an image of Scott Despins that both AB and I know, which is you know, a suit wearing heel, which is what. Scott yeah, I love that scene when the card gets out and, all, and the award falls out. I'm like, oh, this is this is going to be my favorite Buble variant, <laughs> and then he's yeah, and you can. The kids, uh, you don't need a catchy song. The kids will sing along when you sell it with a smile. AB, what do you got next? All right. My number four is a very, uh, very well-known video by a very well-known director, especially a music director. Uh, this guy, I could have put about 10 of his music videos on uh, this list because he's made so many damn awesome ones. He uh, went on to direct one of my favorite films of all time, which we talked about recently, uh, and that is Michelle Gondry. And that video, which uh, Jim probably almost brought up, uh, was on the thing, is The White Stripes Fell in Love with a Girl. One of the coolest things I've ever seen on a music video uh, made from Lego uh, and stop. He used partially made it with stop motion uh, animation with actual Lego. And then uh, digitally, he filmed Jack and, and Meg and then digitally went over top of it. But for the longest time, I thought that the entire thing was made out of Lego and thought it was the crazy, like the best thing ever. And I still think it's pretty awesome. Uh, but. Uh, just the the sheer creativity of it it's unbelievably lo uh, looks unbelievably cool um he just has a, a way of uh creating these uh you know crazy images using a lot of practical stuff a lot of un very unique uh, uh different th different ways to make their video uh and like i said he, he could have a ton on here He's worked with Bjork. He's worked with Daft Punk. He does the, does the Around the World video. Uh, he's worked with Foo Fighters. They did Everlong. Uh, and, you know, it's just, you can name a ton of his stuff. Uh, and it's all very, very interesting stuff. Very unique videos. Uh, and he just has a style to him that, that I think that, that just looks amazing. Yeah. Uh, it just looks so so unique and like nothing else there's no no other video like that came out before this that, lo that looks as cool as that uh so that my number four is the white stripes fell in love with a girl see i actually was gonna go with the hardest button to button as my number four oh. because I, just, I just i love the whole stop motion of it like they use 36 drums and a whole bunch of different uh amplifiers and guitars to actually fit the image on that music video yep. and of course adding you like she's just playing the bass drum and then they add the snare when she needs it they add the cymbal when she's actually using it in the song i thought that one was a little bit better than this one but no denying this one put the white stripes on the map off of the uh, white blood off this uh white blood cells album uh the hardest button to button also directed by michelle gondry <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I like yeah. I said, I love, I love all like so many of his music videos. That he's just got such a cool, unique way of making uh, films and making music videos. So uh, he used probably, if not number one on my actual, like if I was going to pick a director, but I'm just going by music videos for this. So uh, he definitely, yeah, he's down there, number four. That's a fantastic choice, brother. And with that, I think we're going to get to our number threes, if I'm not mistaken, correct? We are. You are correct. We are. All right. Three. So I'm going to lead off. My screen should be shared, AB. Yep. And this one, just when I saw this video originally, it just looked super cool. When I saw it first in 2002, came out around 2001. Just the, uh, what is the uh, rotography? I think it is, if I'm not mistaken. The album? No, just the uh, oh, style yeah, of yes, drawing there. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. This is Incubus Drive. And yeah. it's based off of a lithograph that was... The animation is based off of a lithograph that was done by a Dutch artist called M.C. Escher called yeah. Drawing Hands, in which both the hands appear to be drawing each other, 
on the lithograph and it just pops up it's just a really interesting drawing if you ever happen to see it online and the beautiful thing about this was that this these drawings were actually done by both brandon boyd the lead singer which you see right here of incubus and the drummer whose name was and let me get it uh jose casillas if i'm not mistaken he was the drummer they both are very talented and actually mm -hmm. uh fine art uh fine art creators and they did the drawings for this which i thought was absolutely amazing yeah, uh, I, I didn't know that I, I had no idea i've seen this video a ton of times i didn't know that they actually yeah. did the the art for it. that's amazing yeah when i discovered it i was just so really impressed by it and then another funny story behind the actual uh setting of this is that it was actually filmed in the student center of or the alumni center i should say of the university of minnesota and from watching pop up video one time i learned that when they filmed this on the actual day of it there was like a huge snowstorm that broke minnesota state records that day so another cool little tidbit behind it huh. but between that between the fact that i think incubus is a little bit underrated when it comes to 2000 bands they kind of huh. get lost in the shuffle but it's just a beautiful acoustic mix acoustic mix effects mix drums it's a very underrated music video and a very underrated song so without a doubt incubus drive from one of my favorite bands one of my favorite songs as my number three yeah i i definitely love that album um i'm i'm definitely an incubus fan uh you're right they they came in an era when there was not a lot of great stuff coming from the rock scene uh there's a lot of really like they, they got lumped in with a lot of really shitty bands like it shifted Uber, into stank and that kind of stuff and it's like uh it, it keeps us far and away better than all of those other bands so i always hated that they got lumped in with that whole scene uh because they they're very talented and and he's he's a great singer as well dude our brandon yeah. boyd yeah they kind of shifted into an era where it was kind of going from an alternative to a more of a pop punk era so mm -hmm. you saw a lot of bands like and I'm not ragging on Blink-182 or Green Day because, again, they any of those videos could actually make this list right now. Green Day had a ton that could be on here. Blink-182, I mean, All the Small Things is an absolutely epic video as well. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, Incubus kind of gets lost in the shuffle, I think, but they mm -hmm. definitely churned out a lot of hits in the late 90s and early 2000s. And this... As I saw it as a kid, as an 11 year old, as a 12 year old, it just so impressed me. And finding out the backstory more of it was yeah. even all the more. That's pretty neat. I didn't know that. That's pretty neat. Yeah. I like that. Cool. cool. You guys know what else rules that's not around anymore? Theme songs to movies that, that <laughs> sell the film. How cool was that in the 90s? There was one man, you know, he was the king of this. This is where he hit, hit his personal apex for me. And in my life, uh, there was no one bigger. I was 10 years old, 1997. The man ruled the airwaves and the silver screen. And I'm talking about one music video on Much and MTV that I watched every week. I couldn't get enough of it. It was my favorite video of all time. I had to shout it out. He was my hero. And it's... <laughs> The Men in Black video. The title held by me, MIB. I tried to do that so much as a kid. Intercutting scenes from the film with Will Smith dancing in the back. Look at his money. This was, I can't stress, a 10 year old Scott. One of my favorite memories was going to this. I saw this with my dad, 1997, Forrest Blade, he took me. And Will Smith was my biggest, biggest hero in the history of heroes and the fact that you mix it you, kind of make it you make it a continuation of the story he's kind of on a side adventure but they're cutting with with scenes from the movie this was big Just rose did it this he did it with wild wild west later this was a statement of the 90s the fact that he gets up from the set is so cool and the biggest thing at this you know what's coming when he meets face to face the monster, the alien comes down, puts on the Ray-Bans. 
every seed just bounce. Just bounce with, with me. Just bounce with me. Come on, let me see. Just, just slide with me. Slide. This was. I would Come do on, this. Come on, let me see. Me. Just walk with me. Just walk with me. Just walk with me. Come on, and make a neck wolf. Now, now freeze. freeze. Man, I cannot downplay Big Willie Style, the album. This song, which was, was which was on that album and not the soundtrack to Men in Black, which I bought and was like, I don't know who any of these people are. Puff Daddy's on that album, but I was too young to know who he was at the time. <laughs> I wanted Will. I wanted more Will. I wanted all the Will. Like I said, nothing will ever beat the summer where I tuned. I had it on the background. I stopped what I was doing when the Men in Black video came on. So... Uh, I had to get it on. It's my number three for nostalgia. It holds up. It's still a cool video. It ties into movies. They don't do this enough. Uh, they should. We'll stop doing it. I would have loved the Suicide Squad song. Maybe that could have saved the film, but maybe we'll get one for King <laughs> Richard. That he does a solo with the Williams sisters. That'd be all right. But uh, love you, Will. Come back. Release a new album. And your best video is the Men in Black video. That brings back a whole bunch of nostalgia for me, not only because the video is just so awesome, uh, but that was actually a very popular favorite because back when I was in elementary school, uh, we had a big drama club over at St. John Elementary. And that one in like the third or fourth performance that we did very early on, we used Men in Black. And that was one of the most popular ones. Did the dance scene, had the guys in the sunglasses. We even had an alien dress up, but not exactly like that. <laughs> but uh, That's funny. But uh, we definitely used for effects. We had a strobe light going on for it. But that one, it just brings back so many good cool. memories. That yeah. one. Right on. All right. Uh, we'll go to my number three. My number three is probably my favorite music video director. Uh, he has a ton. Like, literally, I could have filled the, the list with five of his videos. Uh, he is just a master at making... Uh, super unique, super fun uh, videos that uh, are just are iconic, and that is Mr. Spike Jones. And so I could have put yeah. Sabotage on here. I could have put Da Funk from Da Punk on here. I could have put uh, Praise You, which is a hilarious video with him leading a, a, a amateur dance uh, uh, club in front of a music uh, theater, which he filmed, you know, somewhat illegally in front of this music theater and got kicked off. But uh, I didn't go with any of those. I went with another iconic one uh, starring an iconic gentleman uh, who until then nobody knew had this in him. And I'm talking about Mr. Chris Walken and the video is fat boy slim. And the song is weapon of choice. So I remember watching this for the first time and be like, oh, this is neat. You know, got Christopher Walken, you know, in his music video. And like, I wonder if he's going to do some, you know, gangster stuff or something. Like, what's this all about? And then, you know, the music starts and you see him hear it and you see him start moving to it. And I'm like, oh, this is pretty fun. This is, I like this. This is, this is pretty funny. You know, got Christopher Walken in it. Oh, he's going to get up. Start moving around to it, and the second that he blows everyone's minds. So when this came out, like I said, nobody knew that uh, Christopher Walken was in fact a professional dancer before he became a professional actor, uh, and he was trained uh, as a dancer. This, these are all. This is all him doing uh, these moves. That obviously later on in the video, it gets into some you know crazy special yeah, effects as he starts flying and stuff like that. But this is literally him dancing, dancing on escalators, dancing on uh, trolley carts. Uh, and it is just insanely fun. Is it, like if this doesn't put a smile on your face, uh, I, I feel sorry for you because this is one of the funnest music videos of all time, and one of the at the time one of the most unexpected uh, things that no, nobody saw coming. Uh, and you know, it's a catchy tune. I, I like Fat Boy Slim. Uh, that might not have been Christopher Walken. <laughs> well, you know, that it could have been. Who knows? But uh, it, it's just, it's just a blast. It's a blast of a video. Uh, you know, and uh, you know, showcases both Christopher Walken and Fat Boy Slim's really infectious grooves. Uh, and I, I just, 
it's definitely what's one that puts a smile on my face just thinking about it or just watching it. Uh, I love that video. So that is my my pick for uh, Spike Jones. Who again, I could have put the sabotage video here, but the sabotage video gets enough love. Um, this is this, this is a lot more fun for me. <laughs> Absolutely. When you see uh, celebrities do stuff that's just basically out of character from what you normally picture them doing, it's yeah. always awesome. And the other thing, too, is that in a lot of these videos, too, whenever cameos are dropped, you always see actors, they want to be musicians, much like musicians want to be actors or athletes yeah, or of course. all those three encompassing. So it's always awesome. I had all three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, awesome choice. Great really choice. That one. Thanks. So are we getting to the deuces now? Number two. We are. All right. And this one is not a cameo because he's actually in the whole video. Actually, <laughs> two people were in the whole video for this one. And this one is from an artist by the name of Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Tom yes. Petty was a guy that really embraced music videos when MTV came out in 1982. His first big one that was on MTV that was kind of based off of Mad Max 2, uh, The Road Warrior, was You Got Lucky. Uh, yeah. One I'm gonna I'm not gonna mention the second one that was his really big one because it's gonna be an honorable mention later on, but uh, moved on into the 1990s, continued it, and actually was able to gain the services of two uh, stars that were on some downtime from a certain film, and so I'm going to actually say the words, mouth the words along with Tom Petty as he introduces this video. Yeah. Now. I'd like to tell you a story about and his adventures in the great wide open. That's a great song. This is a great song. Absolutely. So you notice Johnny Depp there, and he plays the lead character in the movie, in the music video, Eddie Rebel, who's making his way to Hollywood to hit the big time, basically. And as you see, Tom Petty is narrating the story, and also, as you notice, the tattoo artist. The artist, yeah. He has a bunch of several different roles in the video, <laughs> as do the rest of the Heartbreakers. Mike Campbell's an awards presenter. Ben Montench is an A&R guy. Uh, Howie Epstein is selling motorcycles, and Stan Lynch is a bouncer. As you notice, this is Faye Dunaway, who is also in the movie wow. that they were producing at the time, Arizona Dream. And the reason why they were able to get them was because apparently the director of Arizona Dream had a big mental breakdown during the filming of that. And so they had all this downtime. Petty was able to requisition their services and they were able to hop into this video and fit the perfect parts of Eddie Rebel. And Faye Dunaway has the role of his fairy godmother and also uh, assistant almost. And so the video shows basically the rise and the fall of Eddie Rebel as it progresses when he hits a lot of success. And then eventually, as he betrays his fairy godmother later on in the video, his, down, his eventual downfall and his spiral into basically ending up where Petty ends up at the start of the video, which is as a tattoo artist. And another funny thing about this video is I'm going to bring it down to pause. The video was actually originally filmed when the filming was done of it. The video was 18 minutes long. And so there was this big discussion that there's no way that MTV is going to air an 18 minute long music video. So they had to chop it down and only about six and a half minutes of it made it to actual MTV. So there's 11 and a half minutes of this music video staying somewhere where it shows the whole story of Eddie Rebel. I'll wow. scroll a little further on into it when he hits the big time. Uh, hopefully right around here. And this is when he betrays his fairy godmother, Faye Dunaway. Awesome. As he, yep, yeah. and there's the bouncer Stan Lynch rejecting her, and as he turns his back on her, she eventually gets irritated and uses her cigarette wand, her cigarette, as a magic wand, and begins to beset Eddie with all these problems. 
an unwanted pregnancy from his girlfriend, a meltdown at an award show, among other things, until he spirals down all the way into the end. And to me, this is a perfect example of the story fitting in to the music. And the music was actually extended longer. Ben Montench had a longer uh, keyboard solo, which is absolutely awesome. Mike Campbell was able to show us his uh, top 100 guitarists of all time. Just good, fantastic guitar work. And yeah, it's one of Petty's best work. I think it's better than the other video I'm going to mention a little later on. Mm. But Into the Great Wide Open, number two for me. It's near the top of my list. Man, I, I've never seen that mini music video. I've never heard, uh, even heard all that. Uh, that's pretty amazing. And uh, it's pretty neat considering that Johnny uh, Johnny Depp is a guitarist. Uh, I've seen, I've actually seen him play with Hollywood Vampires uh, with, with Alice Cooper and uh, Joe Perry. And uh, so he caught, he would have been playing guitar like in the, that video, right? And so uh, it's kind of neat. Like you said, actors wanting to be musicians and... Uh, and so, like, you know, it, it, that's that's him. And Johnny Depp and, actually wanted to be a musician. And He's that's the rule. thing, too. He was a failed musician, too, yeah. which absolutely cool. ties him in perfectly. And another thing I will add towards the end of the video is that the <clears throat> new artist is actually probably the second most famous uh, cameo from a friend star in a music video. Matt LeBlanc actually is the new Eddie, Reddy, Eddie Rebel at the end of the video. And I will conclude this review with the words that Petty states at the end of the music video, and they all lived happily ever after. <laughs> That's great. Love it. Cool. All right, so Scott. That, your video reminds me a little bit of my number two in the fact that it tells a story about musicians as well, too. And it's and it's people playing fictionalized versions of themselves. And that's fun. I liked um, these stars, you know, what's about to what i'm about to show with my number two video video i go back to but it's one that lampoons it's a comedy it's it's not as serious as yours it's a comedy of this fictional group and the star of the group was the biggest star in music at the time and he was with his friends in that but he kind of mockingly showed that he was better than them and uh and through that i will be discussing d12's <laughs> my band because, I think everybody's all jealous and because I'm like the lead singer of a band, and if they got a problem, they need to take it up with me after the show. And that's how I feel about Max Flash 5 sometimes. It's tough to be the most famous, most handsome leader of a group. I struggle on, and I, I do it for the sake of the group, much like Eminem is with D12. And in this, and at this time, this is their second album, D12 World, their lead single off of it, and it's... Eminem lampooning himself by being a mega star and performing with D12. And it was D12 with his friends and, uh, back from Detroit. And in it, they each go through and talk about how they're pissed off that Eminem's ego is exceeding the group. And he's got his own stuff and they're going to cut the mic off before he, he goes and as the video goes through, they all show how they're kind of pissed off. And I'm like, man, M doesn't share the spotlight. And it's just us. And, you know, it's kind of funny because that's how it was. I mean, everyone goes to see Eminem. And Eminem had the biggest stuff right now, the biggest videos. I could sit and do five Eminem videos that are incredible, too. The Without Me video, the Real Some Shady, they're all very good. But I like this because he plays a fictionalized version of himself. And as members of D12 come in, too, they start going, how are we going to get back at him? You know? So they get their verses and they start talking about that. And, uh, you know, their plan is to lock him out, put him in the cut, cut his mic off. Hey, yo, what's, and then it goes back to proof and he gets to do it. And again, by far, the one thing that I take away from this video more than anything is my, one of my all time favorite lines that I think of, you know, anytime I get in the back of a photo as people in front of me are taking it, I will always, you know, mumble to myself, Lose Yourself video, I was in the back. Superman video, I was in the back. So thank you for that line, Bizarre, uh, for <laughs> talking about, you know, capitalizing off Eminem's fame and that. And those are just two parts of the video that I wanted to spotlight and make sure I get that uh, anytime I'm in the background of something, I'll always laugh and think of his line where he, Lose Yourself video, I was in the back. <laughs> so of that and the fact that they lampoon their characters, they made fun of themselves. Uh, it's a big video that tells the story of, 
you know, them as a group. And at the end, they're all like white as a boy band. So they're kind of taking on boy band personas. And I like boy bands at the time too. Like I like rap music. So uh, for my number two, I thought it was fun. And it was a video that I, I go back to and watch. And like I said, it, it transcends videos because I kind of, you know, even anywhere at the gym, if somebody's taking a selfie, I'll be like, ah, oh, Superman video, I was in the back. And for that, I'll, it's my number two. So I wanted to shout out D12, uh, my band. That video got huge airplay when definitely you and I, Scott, are only a couple years apart, but that was all over much music in 2004, 2005. Of course. So, yeah, absolutely agree with it. It was always it was always funny how, yeah, Eminem wasn't afraid to share the stage with his buddies. So yeah. that was also And he used too. it, but like, again, going back, it's a, kind of like an episode of Entourage almost, but it's Eminem being friends. Be like, wouldn't it be funny if we wrote a video where I was just like a loser egotistical, maniacal leader of a boy band, and then it's the kind of lampoon that, so very cool. <laughs> yes. All right, uh, my number two. So um, my, you know, five through three, you know, my five was crazy, but uh, four and three were fun, light, you know, in very entertaining stuff. Uh, my two and my one are a little more serious, and they, to me, kind of transcend uh, the music video format, and uh, take on a lot more meaning uh my number two is from director jonathan glazer uh who's also worked with uh radiohead he's worked with blur he's worked with massive attack and one of his famous most famous videos is jamiroquai's virtual insanity uh with buddy mm. on, on the treadmill uh but this video for me i saw this music video uh, when I was in college and it was an, another late night, I was watching, I'm watching much music and this music video game came on and I knew the song already, uh, but I'd never seen the video. And after I watched it, I turned the TV off and I sat in the darkness and i just, you know, thought about the video and thought about, you know, uh, what it meant. And it was just, it impacted me so much. Uh, and it's by a, a kind of a, a super group at the time. A collaboration is called Uncle, and it was DJ Shadow uh, mix, uh, mixed with uh, a guy called James Lavelle, who was an electronic artist, and they formed Uncle. And they had an album that featured a bunch of guest star vocals. Uh, and then you know uh, James Lavelle has gone on as Uncle, which also you know features a lot of big name guest vocals. Uh, and one of the biggest guest vocals, and which is when the reason why. I, you know, basically started listening to this guy, uh, these guys, uh, other than, you know, DJ Shadow was they did a song with Tom York uh, from one of my favorite bands, which is Radiohead. And the song is called Rabbit in Your Headlights. And uh, then this is Uncle. And so this, this gentleman here is a um, famous French actor who's been in, in a lot of theater productions and a lot of French films. His name's uh, Denis Laurent. Uh, and here he is playing uh, a man who has um, very obvious mental health issues and he's wandering down a uh, tunnel, right through the middle of the tunnel. And as he's going, cars are driving by um, and you know he's you know having has ticks has clear like uh verbal you know things and you know real real mental health issues cars are slowing down and you know a car eventually hits him uh he's lying there he, he gets up uh and you know uh, he's lying there gets up again continues on his path uh cars are, are swerving again you know avoiding him swerving out of the way uh the eventually uh you got people just kind of looking at him you're ignoring him going by him uh eventually there is a car that stops and you think oh these guys are you know going to help him and, you know, here he gets he's gonna get hit again and it's it, like it's again it's really really just they they it got got a lot of controversy because it's really tough to watch and you, you see him get hit a bunch of times and it's and you know he kind of looks at him and drives away, and um, you know leaves him lying there. And I'll I, you know I'll, I'll fast forward a bit. Actually, I'll pause it and you know talk a little bit about it. But uh, I continues to walk on. There's a, a part later on where I, I, like I said, there's a car that stops and starts talking to him, and 
you think, oh, these people are going to help him. And he said, you know, you, hey, buddy, you know, where are you going? Where are you headed? And they proceed to just ridicule and mock him before driving off. And so he, uh, you know, gets hit repeatedly by cars um, along, along the way. And uh, it com- uh, basically goes to the end, near the end of the video. And I will play out the end of the video as it's, it's a pretty powerful ending. Uh, if it will play, of course, which, <laughs> of course, it won't. Um, well, I mean, it was pretty powerful to begin with. I mean, it is the video is actually a very much a social commentary because it is how yeah, sometimes we treat people that do have mental health deficiencies if they're just out in public. That's, that that's it. Avoid avoiding well, there's, them there's, or there's, just there's... don't care, right? Well, that's that. That's the thing. They have, you know, the, there's ap- the general apathy towards mental health. There is the ridicule of mental health. And then there is the downright hostility of, you know, the, represented by him repeatedly getting hit by cars and, you know, people just driving off and leaving him for dead. Uh, yeah. And it looks like it's not going to play for me. So at the end of it, he takes off his jacket. And uh, like I, 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 you know, if you get a chance to check out the videos, it's a really great ending. But he, oh, here it goes. Finally, this is a good play. He, you know, he takes off his jacket uh, and starts continue to walk down. He's pretty beat up, but he, you know, takes off his uh, coat, tosses it, continues to walk on. It looks like he's gonna get nailed again by another car. They're just coming up behind him. Stops, pauses. Boom. Explodes out through the car. And uh, it, it's just, man, it, it's one of those videos that, again, you know, this, this isn't a video to showcase the song. This isn't a video to showcase the the band this is a video that has something to say and has something to say about uh, a very uh, meaningful subject and especially you know this was uh back in 1998 uh when we, we you know we've made a lot of steps in as far as mental health in the last uh 20 years but we're still a long way off but back then in 1998 we're still we were way far off and mental health was not a thing that was dealt with properly on on a, uh, a wide scale uh, you know, and it's like I said, it still has a long way to go. Uh, and so watching this video, uh, it, it was just, it like, it stopped me in my tracks. Um, and I, like I said, I sat in silence in the darkness in the middle of the night and just, uh, was shook by this video. It, it really, uh, really got to me and really, uh, you know, uh, like I said, I love this song, uh, before that, but it, you know, it took on a whole, different uh, thing because of this video and because of, uh, you know, the things that, you know, it's, it's alluding to. Uh, and it, for that, it, it's definitely been one of my uh, most impactful videos. It's not my favorite video because obviously, you know, I don't enjoy watching it. It's not a, vi- a video that I enjoy watching over and over again because it's, you know, it's pretty disturbing. Uh, but it is one that had a major impact on me uh, at a very, um, you know, meaningful time when, you know, I was in my, uh, late teens, early twenties, um, uh, would have been, I guess it would have been, you know, 20, 1920. Uh, and, uh, it really, you know, uh, got me thinking on, on things that I should have been thinking about that, you know, that these are issues that people are dealing with and we are not dealing with them in the proper manner. And so it's, it's that kind of stuff that I like that, you know, again, uh, this isn't uh, just a music video. This is something that means a little bit more. And so we'll get to my number one, and it, it's much in the same way. Uh, but uh, my, I wanted to showcase two and one as something that are music videos that are not just music videos. So it's my number two. Well put, A.B. Yeah, that's great. It's exactly. I got the gist of it. I've never heard of that, and I have never will. But that little moment that you did, you encapsulated it well. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very touched by that uh, description of it, AB, and definitely mental health is There's obviously way more important topics than me. I'm like, Will Smith's cool. You're like, 
child molestation and, and <laughs> mental illness. And I'm like, this is clearly why I was brought on the show to be like, I don't know. Okay, go is fun. They're on treadmills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, oh, we're, pal, bring us around. We've always bounced around to a bit of different things, but it is nice that we can go from one subject to another and kind of do it in kind of a graceful manner. So with that being said, we're going to get to our honorable mentions right now. And actually, Mr. Despins, you inspired me with this one from our last episode, which was CanCon, because you went to your family and you asked them what their opinions were about their favorite music, uh, well, their favorite Canadian content. So I wanted to go to my family and do the exact same thing. Right. <laughs> so I went, I went to the patriarch first. That's Mark Vanderford, my father. His was the, his top video was "Don't Come Around Here No More" by Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. That was the Alice in Wonderland based video, one of Tom Petty's most famous. It had Dave Stewart of uh, the Eurythmics Cynics in it as uh, the hook, a, uh, hook smoking hook at the start of it. Brilliant, brilliant. I went. Uh -oh. Love the death. He is a little bit more. Uh, how would you say uh, juvenile in this thinking? But I love this music video too. It's the Bloodhound Gang's Foxtrot Uniform Charlie <laughs> Kilo, which has is a very so, funny video. So many sexual innuendo yeah. references in it, funny. but I absolutely love that he chose that one. It sticks totally with his character, and I love my brother to death. Uh, another person I love to death is my older sister Carla, and her pick for her favorite music video was Work It by Missy That's Elliott. Yeah. There you go. Cool. And of course, that one won. That's on uh, a ton of lists. If you Google top like rap album uh, videos, yeah. it's always like top three. Yeah, absolutely. I looked at like 20 lists and it's not less than three on any of them. No one was bigger than Missy Elliott in 2003. And she, that was video of the year for the VMAs that year. I think it was the 20th anniversary of the VMAs. But Carla Vanderfort might be lying a little bit because as her brother, I remember her favorite music video being oh, Backstreet's yeah. Bad. Yeah. Backstreet's it's a great, it's a great video. video. Yeah. That video yeah. is, I should have put it on as an honorable mention. And that, of course, had all the boys playing different horror characters. Yeah. Kevin That's was Jet, the Wolfman, uh, Phantom of the Opera, Jekyll and Hyde. So, yeah. And then... I went to her, my brother-in-law, my sister's husband, Major Dustin West, and his top video was Downtown by R Macklemore and Ryan Lewis, a music video which That's I had fun. never seen before. But it's, oh, it's, it's good. It's a good video, yeah. Yeah, but it was absolutely fun. Am I mistaken? I think Ken Griffey Jr. might have a cameo in that. Really? Yeah, there's I a ton of cameos so. in that. Well, Let me take awesome. a look, because I think the line is throwing fish to a fan, and he throws the fish like they do in Seattle. And Ken Griffey Jr. catches it. And I remember being like, oh, this video rules. Well, that's pretty awesome. However, Dustin West also mentioned something first. And I wanted Downtown to with Ken Griffey Jr. Great now, choice. I, I wanted to make sure that that was recognized because his first choice when he originally talked to me was a thong song by Cisco. <laughs> <laughs> it's another epic video. And so that, that's, meant, that's meant to embarrass them, tease them a little bit, but I love my family. I love that they were able to contribute a little bit to this show. So there are some honorable mentions from me, from my family, that's for you great. guys to listen to. Fun. Cool. Love it. So, Scott, want to take care of honorable mentions? Yeah, of course. I got my three here. Um, AB, street continues, man. Another week where we cross paths on something because this is unbelievable. I'll never forget. Actually, this is one where my dad sat me and he said, you got to see this video. Yeah. And I was 13, 12, 13 when it came out. And I was like, man, Christopher Walken can move. And it's just so cool. I was a dancer too when I was a kid. So just seeing this, I, I've come back around to really appreciating my, my dancing history with tap, jazz, and a bit of ballet and stuff. And uh, and for that, I uh, I think it rules. So the Fat Boy Slim video is awesome. Uh, my number two, another high school guilty pleasure that I downloaded and listened to quite a bit was the Bad Boy for Life video that Diddy did with Black Rob, Mark Curry. In it, 100 cameos of people. Basically, it's an all-white neighborhood. Diddy comes in with all his friends, the moving trucks. They move in and drive through the streets. He rides bikes with Mike Tyson. He's 
playing basketball with Shaq. There's an awesome cameo in the middle with Ben Stiller who comes and he's his neighbor and he tells him kind of like neighbors to keep it down and he gives them back his golf ball that they shot in. And um, it's just cool. It's great, Diddy. And in this one, we said no thriller, but you, I mean, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be the only one, but it doesn't mean we can't shout out MJ. So I'm going to still shout out an honorable mention. You always got to include Eddie, Magic, and, and MJ at the height of their powers, three of the most well-known celebrities of the 80s coming together uh, for Remember the Time uh, with Michael Jackson playing an Egyptian, going against the Pharaoh to try and uh, serenade his, his wife and uh, not having it. But like I said, you get Eddie, mega fan, you get Magic here, and you get MJ doing his classic stuff with a little bit of CGI and kind of a fun Aladdin bit where it turns into a fun little chase. So those are three honorable mentions I wanted to shout out. Cool. I, I don't have slides for mine, but I'm going to show the DVDs. Um, I only have two honorable mentions, and they're going to be, again, directors. Uh, this is Stefan Said No, who's done stuff. I'll show it there. Uh, he's done stuff with Red Hot Chili Peppers, Bjork, uh, Lannis Morris said, Massive Attack, Garbage, U2. Uh, and I'm going to give a shout out to uh, Bjork's Big Time Sensuality, which I love that video. Uh, and this guy would be on the near the top of my music video uh, directors. Uh, his name, uh, is, and he would be my other I'll mention, is Anton Corbin, uh, who uh, did one of your one of the, one of the mentions uh, on, I think, Brit, uh, Britney's thing was the, the American. He, he directed that. Uh, with um, uh, oh, am I blanking on him? Um, man, <laughs> huge movie star. Uh, George Clooney. Jeez. Uh, anyways, uh, he George Clooney is an American. He did that movie, but he oh. also did uh most of Depeche Mode's divi uh, videos. Uh, he's worked with Echo and the Bunnymen, U2, Nirvana. He did the Heart Shaped Box video. Uh, he did the Liar video for uh Rollins Band. Uh, but I'm going to pick Joy Division's Atmosphere, which he did. You know, years after Joy Division had not been abandoned, and uh, uh, Ian Curtis had. You know long passed away uh but that atmosphere video is uh really really a great tribute to ian curtis uh so that's my pick for that one for honorable mentions so yeah that's i only have two all right Over so number let's, ones. let's go with number ones right now and number my number one is going to be from my favorite band the first band i ever saw in concert was the red hot chili peppers Cool. And this was actually their fourth single from their uh, uh, album that was released in 1999. It was a self-titled single, but believe me, it's epic because it encapsulated uh, a certain uh, and it encapsulated this perfectly. So let's load up the screen. <laughs> it is Californication. I mean. This is everything you would want. I, when it came out in 2000, this is everything you would want a PlayStation 2 game to be. You have all <laughs> yeah. the characters. And by the way, all the characters are rated at the highest level as possible in their certain instrument that they play. You see in the top corner as well, they've got the time ticking down on the screen. It definitely looks better than which is, which is the duration of the song. The save points with their symbol is absolutely perfect. That yeah. cuts back to the live shot images. And then just the perfect music that is in between. It covers a whole bunch of different eras. As you see, Chad is surfing through the San Gabriel, or snowboarding through the San Gabriel Mountains. He's also, later on in the music video, he's grinding on the Golden Gate Bridge, which I just found <laughs> was completely awesome. Like, that had me hooked in I'm music. I'm this, this video. Is super cool. But As a PlayStation like, fan? Yeah. Yeah, this is like the perfect PlayStation 2 game. Open world concept. You have Anthony Kiedis swimming in the Pacific Ocean right now. You had John, who was traversing through the weird and wacky world of Hollywood. Flea, later on in the music video, is uh, traveling through through the uh, sequoia between all these redwoods and a hillbilly family that he later hits up. But this song rocks. It was their comeback album. And there's nothing better than seeing Anthony Kiedis surf on a shark. I mean, this is just <laughs> absolutely perfect. 
And then there you see Flea right here. And like fighting bears. all of them are covered. Fighting Some bears. Around the world. Traveling through a tunnel. I mean, it ages. It aged so well. I mean, it's like the... It's what people wanted a video game to be in the 2000s. Like... When this came out in 2000, the graphics were still on the end. We were still on the N64. We were still on the Dreamcast. The graphics weren't as great at this. This was futuristic. This is what mm -hmm. we wanted our video games to look like in the future. And the fact that the Chili Peppers encapsulated that in this music video is just so awesome. It's so cool. It's one of the ones I go back to every month or every two months just because it's such... Not only is it an awesome song, but it's just... The video was just, I thought tremendously cool so without a doubt number one my alpha and omega for music videos californication That's nothing awesome. better yeah that video was definitely great i didn't know that I, I don't i don't dip my toe in those rock waters like you guys yeah. but that's a cool video i'm glad you shared it i i, I take nothing away from uh it's that video today which i'm going to check out because it's pretty fun and pretty cool and like takes me back to my time but um you know, you don't have to be a fan of the music because I couldn't name a Chili Pepper song, but that video will definitely be one that I check out. Yeah, when you get to the sur when you get to the grinding with the surfboard on the Golden Gate Bridge, I mean, that's just you know, feed me more of it. Just inject it into my veins right now. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> so brilliant, Scott. I hope you can follow that one because, well, it's my favorite. I want to see what yours is. I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you guys, uh, music is art. This video shows if you never did agree that music can be art in any different facet you saw through your animation, you through, see it through your storytelling. I'm going to go back to this one. And, uh, guys, I'm a very, pro, this is a pro Kanye podcast. It has to be because, <laughs> on it, because I'm on it. And I said this and I gave you all a warning that if, uh, if I can use them on a list and it does, Kanye West will be my number one, no matter the category, if he fits. And when we knew videos, I said, well, Kanye is going to be my number one. I just got to decide which one. And AB and I were talking off camera about Through the Wire, which is a wonderful kind of documentary with Polaroids that flashes through. Jesus Walks was immensely important to me. Uh, Touch the Sky is one of his most fun ones, but uh, we're going to take it back. So at this time, Kanye had worked with two of your directors, AB. He had worked on, on videos with Spike Jones and uh, has a great relationship. And he had done Heard Him Say with Michelle Gondry. And... 2010 guys kanye 2010 all-time low fandom appreciation he was nuclear he was radioactive he was untouchable and he was that buble character that i love so much times a thousand he was uh, he was a uh, doa then he comes back with my beautiful dark twisted fantasy and in it uh his magnum opus is a 35 minute film akin to Purple Rain or Thriller unto itself that tells the story of Kanye West playing a man named Griffin who's visited by a phoenix. And in it, he adjusts her to life. And as the album is playing the songs in the sequential order, it's telling the story as well, too. And I can't pick the 35-minute video. So that video was called Runaway. And at the 11-minute mark, we will be discussing Kanye's getting up from the dinner table going over to the piano and bringing in a group of ballerinas. So this is the 11 minute mark of the 35 minute video, which is uh, Kanye West's uh, director directorial debut. And in it, it's the first video that he directed. He wrote, starred, produced in the video and he directed this, this portion and then we edited the entire video together. When you put back together the lyrics of the song, Kanye understanding, apologizing, it's it's Kanye mixing the beauty of music with his personality in it. In the video, the Phoenix represents, you know, his inability to sustain and live in high society and how he's having a tough time with it. I do want to read this one quote that I found here that I think is pretty much surmises it. Oh, if I lost it, shoot. So not going to be able to read it. I'm going to do it from memory what they said, though. But they talk about how this video was kind of a mixture of beauty and anger and, and ugliness and toxicity. And much like ballet is. Ballet is something that is so beautiful, but it is built upon broken legs, deformed joints, and uh, broken, battered feet. 
And in it, Kanye, like ballet, is able to mesh the two. And the lyrics of the song encompass his love of high luxury brands, encompass things that uh, high stature and status and things like that, but he's not able to hold on to them because he is, uh, you know, he's talking right now, a jerk off will never take work off. And he's warning you to run away as fast as you can. So he is apologizing, but he's acknowledging himself as a character. So in this, it's very minimalistic. It's with, it's uh, Kanye on the, the piano playing it, having ballerinas perform for him. And it's just a beautiful video of it. In it too, when he gets to it, he gets on top. I've listened to a lot of breakdowns on this. A lot of people think that this is Kanye finally seeing the forest through the trees. The ballerinas in the wide shot represent the trees of fandom. And he's finally encompassing that and seeing through it. So for the look, for his aesthetic, for the entire video, the 35-minute A-plus epic, uh, my number one music video is Kanye West Runaway, which is always up there if you search for best Kanye West uh, videos. So for that and everything else and that story, I, uh, I am happy to pick Runaway as my number one. Awesome. You know, it's, I'm not a big fan of Kanye West, but that song actually sounded very uh, less uh, bombastic than his other stuff would be, I <laughs> no, guess. Yeah, the, I do and, now that uh, I have access, I want to read this quote now. I wanted to do a jury, but I want to get this. So, uh, in, word, in other words, Kanye sticks a symbol of classical refinement next to lyrics about being toxic and acting ugly. Ballet already does this too. All that beauty is built on twisted toes, bloody shoes, and deformed legs. He's attracted to the symbols of classical refinement and aristocracy, ballet, golden goblets, Persian rugs, Greek mythology, and next level brands. And then he sits them, uh, sits among them, reminding us that it doesn't make him any different or keep him from acting poisonous uh, or pissing the world off by grabbing people's microphones. And at this time, I was all in. I've never wavered. I've never left. And this was his apology back to the mainstream high society, following it up the next year with Watch the Throne. And he's off to the iconic races after that, following it with Yeezus and then changing each time. And as we sit on the eve of Donda, there is nobody more excited than me. And uh, and I will be listening to that on repeat tomorrow. So you'll get my thoughts on that. But otherwise, uh, at this <laughs> point, if I can work Kanye on the list, I'm happy to. So my number one is a runaway. Cool. Well put, Scotty. AB, drive us home, baby. All right. Um, so, like I said, uh, again, this is a, a lot more serious. It's a very serious video. Um, and I'll start off by talking about the director so we can get that out of the way. Uh, this is a very, very big director in the music video world. His name is Mark Romanek. Uh, he is, has a boatload of videos under his belt. He has did the 99 Problems video for Jay-Z. He's worked with the Chili Peppers. He worked with Madonna. He worked with U2. He's worked with Bowie. He, uh, you name it. This guy has done a music video for it. He's done a ton. And so uh, he wanted to uh, make a music video for a certain artist. Uh, and he approached the the um, the record company and that artist, and basically pleaded with them to let him make a music video for a particular song, and they were not down with it. Uh, and he said, uh, "I will work for free in order to make this music video for you." Uh, and you know, they they were kind of uh, on the fence about making it because the artist uh, health health issues were uh, becoming a problem. Uh, and so they eventually agreed on it. Uh, they, he got the artist for two days and had two days to work with him. Uh, that artist is an absolute icon, a musical legend. Uh, and that song is a, a cover song by another band. That musical legend is, goes by the name of Johnny Cash. That song is Hurt. I should have known. This is great. Tremendous. Yeah, uh, this this video, again, like I said, transcends music videos. This is uh, they filmed this in uh, the, the House of Cash check with the House of Cash, which was Johnny Cash's old house that was transformed into a, uh, a Johnny Cash museum. But it had since closed uh, and it was in it was falling apart around him. It was dilapidated. There was gold records on the floor with crack cases. Uh, here's here's the house of cash, uh, and uh, we basically had two days to work with him, and they got it done. Uh, and he filled it in with uh, shots of 
um, you know, his life and, you know, he had some, some of his movies, some of his uh, life, some of his family. Uh, and it just, it basically encapsulates, encapsulates his entire career, his entire life. Uh, and this is a man who uh, is unflinchingly, brutally honest his entire career. That's one of the things that marks his life was that he was brutally honest brutally truthful and something he lived by and things people loved about him uh and here he is at the end of his life he knows that he's at the end of his life and he in this song is reflecting on his uh career on his family uh and on on basically on his life and he's you know coming up on death and he knows it and he's got the the, his, the dilapidated uh, museum around and there's gold records broken on the ground uh and he's looking at it almost with regrets as you know it's all just gone away and, and, and you know um when they approached trent reznor of nine nails who do, do the original song uh he was not keen on the idea he thought it was kind of gimmicky until he came around on it and after trent saw the video uh he famously said i feel like my great my girlfriend broke up with me because that song isn't mine anymore it's his and uh you know he watched the video with zach del roca in the studio and both of them had to wipe away tears at by the end of it and went and uh got coffee because they couldn't stick around uh they were so so shooken by the video and you just see this this feast he's sitting alone at the table uh you know and then the, the feast is you know the food's kind of rotted it shows it rotting and again the the, the uh stuff you know kind of decaying around him uh that's him him and his wife june and she's in the video uh coming up there she is she uh they got her for a quick thing uh sadly she passed away two months after the music after they finished filming uh, and she never she was so she was already passed by the time the video first aired which added an infinite amount of weight to her appearance in the video into the video itself right because he had lost everything at that point he had lost he lost his did the love of his life uh he's you know basically on death's door and uh you see him coming up there's part here that you know i i, wa I can't watch this video i'm gonna get choked up right there that you know he's breaking down uh while filming this thing uh and it's got one of I don't, <laughs> i'm not gonna make it through this video uh got one of the most iconic endings to think this is the last known thing that john cash released to the public uh, before he died he passed away six months after this was filmed he uh this is basically uh the last thing he did and so you've got this shot here which is one of the greatest shots in mu music video history of him closing the piano rubbing his hands on it that that that's a career that that that's that's it that that's the last thing he did that's his his, his goodbye to the world uh as an artist as a man and uh right. it is it is i mean it's it's unbelievable <laughs> like i i i this is i mean i I'm, I'm can't believe i made it through without sobbing i cannot make it through that video without at least shedding at least one tear uh it is uh again a video that uh transcends it's not just a music video this is a man uh reflecting on his entire mortality and his entire life uh and it is crushing it's a crushing song it's a crushing video to watch uh but it is one of the most powerful things i've ever seen in my life and then you know as a lifelong uh johnny cash fan from a uh a, a long line of johnny cash fans um it, it's uh it brings me to weep every time i watch it um just reflecting and it, as as i get older uh, it becomes more and more meaningful as I start reflecting on my own mortality and the lo uh, potential lo uh, loss of loved ones. It takes on even more meaning as uh, the years go on. Uh, it's it's like nothing else I've I've seen on a music video. So uh, that is easily my number one. Johnny Cash shirt. Good one. I, I very remember that one too. It's one of the best ways any artist can ever go out. It's the final chapter. It's one of the best. Yeah, it's the popular music equivalent to Beethoven's Ninth, right? Yeah, I mean, the reflective phase of his life, and Johnny Cash is a classic. Classics never die.
That's right. Cool. All right. This was an awesome show, guys. I mean, we covered a we covered a whole bunch of different emotions. We covered we had some fun. We had a little bit of sadness. We had some deep topics on it. I loved every minute of it. Thanks for doing this with me, guys. I really appreciate yeah. it. Ha happy right. happy birthday, MTV. Absolutely. Happy 40th. And to everyone that's watching out there, please add your thoughts on it. If you have a top five, share it in the Facebook page, the Instagram page, and in the comments below. We'll be back next month with a new show, with a new different topic, and hopefully maybe one or two more people in this. But I had a blast doing it with you, Scott, with UAB. You're my buds. Love you guys. Yeah. And thanks, everyone, for watching, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.